Good morning, viewers. What you're watching right now is a number of different spacecraft that were envisioned by the late, great Werner von Braun, including lunar landers that he came up with in the 1950s. These were much more ambitious lunar landers than the LEM that eventually set down on the lunar surface in 1969. It was not a two-stage solution where half of the spacecraft would remain in orbit and the other half, conserving as much weight as possible, would take two astronauts down to the surface. We're talking many more astronauts, 10, perhaps 20 at a time, and up to 60 tons worth of total payload, all going down to the moon and all ascending from the moon without leaving anything in orbit. But how are you going to deliver this kind of mass to the lunar surface? Saturn V definitely did not have the capability to do anything this ambitious. All it could do is a couple of astronauts. Even today with SS, LS, if you want to land four astronauts at a time on the lunar surface, you're going to have to dock with a space station first and use a separate lunar lander to do it. There's no way to get that many people and that much cargo to the lunar surface in one shot. Or is there? Well, Werner von Braun always thought big because he didn't want to just go to the moon. He wanted to go to Mars. And to get this much cargo to the moon in one shot, you needed a massive rocket. And this is what he had in mind, the Nova. Now, as we all know, NASA never built the Nova, even though it was supposed to carry out the follow-up missions to Apollo to establish a lunar base eventually. But now we have something that actually isn't too dissimilar to the Nova, at least as far as the first and second stages are concerned. Starship has much the same capabilities. Could we make a Nova-class rocket out of Starship? We're going to find out right now. Good afternoon, spaceflight enthusiasts, and once again, welcome to the Angry Astronaut. A quick note, I am using more animation from the amazing Haze Gray Art. However, I'm not going to show you the entire clip, and also you're not going to get the audio. And I'll tell you, this guy puts together amazing audio as if you're actually watching a broadcast from the 1960s and 70s. If you want to check all of that out, links in the description. You have to go to his channel to get the whole thing. Oh, Okay, let's talk about NOVA. As you can see, NOVA is a three-stage rocket that actually isn't all that much bigger than Saturn V. It's only about three meters taller. However, what it is, is a lot thicker. We're talking about a rocket that's about 15 meters in diameter. The first stage of Saturn V is only about 10 meters in diameter, and Starship is only nine meters in diameter. So this this is a mega rocket in terms of the types of fuel tanks it can carry and how many engines you can cram onto the booster. The Nova had the amazing capability, at least in theory, of packing eight F1 engines for a total thrust of 13,920,000 pounds of thrust or 61,925 kilonewtons. This isn't quite as much thrust to Starship, but it's close. And then the second stage packed eight J2 engines, and this was capable of producing 1,860,000 pounds of thrust or 8,265 kilonewtons. Now, Starship, with its amazing six Raptor engines on its second stage, actually has more than double this thrust capability, 2.8 million pounds of thrust. There is some difference in terms of ISP. The J2 engines on the Nova could burn for 425 seconds, whereas the Raptors only burn for 327 seconds at sea level, but 380 seconds in vacuum which is where most of this is going to be taking place with the second stage. So it sounds like we're off to a really good start here. It sounds like Starship's first and second stages have not just as much capability as Nova, but actually more. 
So that being the case, could we just use the first and second stage of Starship as the beginning, the foundation for a modern day Nova rocket? Well, there are some drawbacks. First of all, Starship reuses both its first and second stages. In order to do that, it has to keep at least some of its propellant in reserve in order to land, in order to carry out its braking maneuvers and especially its propulsive landing as it plunges towards the surface of the Earth. Starship is also considerably heavier than Nova, weighing in at 4.9 million kilograms when it's fully loaded, as opposed to less than 4.4 million kilograms for Nova. But more importantly, when empty, Nova is substantially lighter than Starship. It weighs just over 258,000 kilograms, whereas Starship weighs approximately 300,000 kilograms empty. We're not entirely certain about all those statistics and they're likely to change as Starship piles on a more resilient heat shield as it gets developed. But nevertheless, we think that's about what it weighs. So you're talking 50 metric tons of additional weight while empty. And why is this? Because after all, even though Starship is taller than Nova, Nova has a significantly greater diameter. Once again, about 15 meters on the first stage and the second stage is even about 12 meters so we're talking a significant amount of material at least the same as what Starship has so why do we have the huge weight disparity well I'm sure you can guess it's all that stainless steel I have to admit I've been a bit annoyed hearing non-stop about what genius it was to utilize stainless steel in Starship's construction yes it makes it resilient Yes, it's inexpensive. Yes, it seems to survive re-entry in the atmosphere better, but it's just heavier, and that is a significant problem. The only way you can overcome this drawback is to pile on more engines or add more fuel, bigger fuel tanks, and just make Starship bigger and bigger to compensate. It may be in order to build a Nova-class Starship, you might have to go back to what was originally intended for Starship, and that's the carbon fiber design. Yes, ridiculously expensive, but as we're going to see, there's a hell of a lot of advantage to going this route. And by the way, Nova's mass includes its third stage, whereas Starship's mass is only first and second, obviously. So what would happen if we added a third stage to Starship? I mean, how practical is that to put a third stage into Starship's fairing? Well, very practical indeed. Look at what can fit inside Starship's fairing. If you might recognize that as being a Centaur 3 upper stage. We're talking the second stage of a Vulcan Centaur can fit inside the fairing of Starship's second stage. However, with Vulcan Centaur, you do lose a lot of performance compared to Werner Von Braun's idea of a third stage. Even with a cluster of four RL-10 engines, which is double what the Centaur usually carries, you're only talking 96,000 pounds worth of thrust, whereas the Nova, powered by a single J-2 engine, generated 232,000 pounds of thrust. And by the way, both of them run off of Hydrolox. It's amazing what NASA was capable of back in the day. And by the way, what you're watching right now is a test firing of the J2X engine, which was supposed to be a less expensive and easier to build version of the J2 built by Aerojet Rocketdyne, and the program was strangely canceled in 2013. They were supposed to use it on the upper stage of SLS and just replaced by more RL-10 engines, which is unfortunate because, as I said, even a cluster of four RL-10s cannot deliver the same performance performance as one of these engines. Now, some of you may be asking, why not just put a Raptor engine on the third stage? It's a hell of a lot more powerful. Just use that. Well, there's a reason why Hydrolog
Goldilocks is the fuel of choice for upper stages that are on their way to the moon. Unlike Mars, there's very little, if any, in situ methane or anything to make in situ methane out of on the lunar surface, meaning that refueling a starship on the surface of the moon is a virtual impossibility, whereas manufacturing in situ hydrolocks will probably be a fairly easy thing to do with all the lunar ice that's available. So utilizing engines that run off of hydrolocks is always a better idea for lunar landers. Starship was just never actually designed to go to the moon. It was designed to go to Mars, where you can manufacture in situ methylocks. So you may be asking, why bother doing this? Why bother making a Nova-class starship at all? Why not just use Starship as it was originally designed? Well, because Nova was capable of delivering, at least in theory, 68 metric tons to translunar injection orbit. That's 30 tons more than SLS, meaning that a very sizable lunar lander carrying lots of crew, lots of payload, certainly as much as the early Artemis missions call for, probably significantly more than that, actually could be delivered to the surface of the moon without refueling at all. And then if you had perhaps one or two refueling missions, just getting a little bit more fuel into Starship as opposed to the 10 that are necessary right now, you would be able to deliver even more payload to the surface. If you add nuclear engines to the third stage, and by the way, that is definitely what NASA is planning to do. Nuclear thermal engines are going to be tested in space by 2027. The payload increases even more, again, without refueling. One of the biggest drawbacks, in my opinion, that Starship faces is the fact that by the time it gets to low Earth orbit, Orbit, it's essentially out of gas. It requires a complete refueling to get anywhere in the solar system and to have the smallest chance of getting all the way back. As a matter of fact, one of the big reasons that everyone's talking about using empty starships as lunar bases and just leaving them on the lunar surface rather than returning them to Earth is because, well, in my opinion anyway, Starship is not going to have the delta V necessary to get all the way back to Earth. Without any in-situ fuel at its disposal, I don't see how Starship can carry out a complete round trip to the moon and back and also rendezvous with the Lunar Gateway. Even a direct shot to the moon and then a direct shot all the way back seems very impractical for Starship. The Delta V to get all the way to the surface of the moon and back to Earth is actually quite similar to the Delta V required to get to Mars and back, and as we all know, Starship is going to require a refueling on the Martian surface in order to return. So what's another advantage of going this route as opposed to building a Nova rocket from scratch? Well, Nova was expendable. A Nova Starship doesn't have to be first and second stages can be completely reused and actually if you use the ACES version of the Vulcan Centaur upper stage that also is reusable. You can use it as a reusable tug, a reusable lunar lander, lots of different applications. So in theory you can have a completely reusable three-stage rocket capable of delivering enormous payloads to the surface of the moon without all that pesky refueling. In my opinion, that is going to be one of the biggest hurdles that we face as time goes on with Starship continuing to support an ongoing lunar base. The launch cadence necessary to support 10 refueling flights every time you want to go to the moon or Mars for that matter is going to be extremely problematic in my opinion. Launching the biggest rocket in human history that often is going to continue to create lots of disruption at any major spaceport and as we've seen in Boca Chica, local opposition to Starship is significant already if you're having to launch it 11 times 
times every time you want to go to the moon, it's going to make things even more complicated. If we can use Starship in an innovative way, and let's face it, Werner Von Braun was an innovative guy, I think we can transform Starship from what it is right now to a true interplanetary transport without all the hassles that we're facing currently and revolutionize space flight in the way Elon Musk really wants to. Thank you very much for watching. By the time you start watching this, I'm going to be on a plane across the Atlantic bound for Cape Canaveral. If you'd like to support this trip and all the content you're going to be seeing soon, please check the description for various ways to do that. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.